Ungefragt. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show on Ungdoms Radio. Tune in at 98.7 every Monday and Wednesday at 11.30 and every odd Friday at 2 o'clock. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge and if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and we are back on our radio show. Yes, because we have a radio show guys and Lasse is here today with us as well. Yeah, hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> yes, thanks for being here. No problem. Yeah, we actually like your voice so much uh, that um, yeah, we like to bring you on. Yeah, actually, I think that he should read the challenge, but, you know, it's too late now to, to organize it. But Lasse, it's amazing to have you here. Please expect questions and your reflections. We would be really, really interested what you are thinking about this challenge, because this challenge is not really that heavy in a sense that we are looking for the purpose of life or something, but it's about persistent admirer. So should we go ahead and read the challenge? Sure. Marta, read the challenge. Yeah. Okay, so here it goes. The challenge came from Tetra. Uh, that was the nickname that we got in our website, so we will just stick to it. So, Tetra writes, I have a stalker, kinda. A guy from my class is acting weird. He's bringing me chocolate and my favorite beer whenever I mention something while speaking to others. He signed up to the gym because he saw I was going there. He likes pages on Facebook that I like, therefore he will probably read this post. He wants to walk me from school all the time. What do I do? I can't just stop talking to him because he's my classmate. We work on assignments together all the time, but this is all getting too annoying. Yeah, so this is um, this is something that I think happens to most of us in a lifetime, you know? It's like someone kind of likes us and we think he crosses the line and that makes us really uncomfortable. I, I'm not sure, Marta, do you think that Tetra sent this challenge to us because she was hoping that the guy will read it and get the point? I think that's actually probably one of her options that she has figured out for herself. Yeah, I think so too. But first of all, I think that the situation is, uh, is interesting because we were talking about the thin line between stalking and being very romantic. And I think that if Tetra would like the guy, that would not be a problem. I think it's actually kind of cute, you know, chocolates, beer, gym, meeting here and there. But because she does not like him in that way, she finds it disturbing. But uh, I think there is a thin line here. I don't think this is stalking yet. It's, it's really interesting, this concept of your own perception. Yeah. That exactly same gesture done by a guy you like, you would find exciting and nice. Yeah. And by the guy you don't like, you find it creepy and really annoying. The exactly same gesture. So it's all about our individual perception, how we, you know, how we react to things. Yeah, so I would say, Tetra, don't worry, because it doesn't really look like you have a stalker, full-blown stalker. You just have a guy who probably likes you, but only because of the fact that you don't like him the same way, you find it a little bit creepy. Actually, you know, there is this uh, amazing episode on How I Met Your Mother. Remember, Marta? We watched it. We actually talked about it. It's a doubler dumbler, dumbler theory when I think, what was the name of the Ted? Ted Mosby. Yeah. How could I forget Ted Mosby? The romantic who is looking for the love of his life. So he was saying that, you know, there is a thin line and between being romantic and creepy. And that line depends on your own perception, as we said. So I think that this happened to most of us. It happened to me. I think that some of the things that some guys were doing, I found a little bit creepy and uncomfortable. But when I liked the guy, I was so much into it. So yeah, Lasse, what do you think? I would like to know your opinion. Did you have a stalker? Uh, no, no, I don't have a stalker. You um, never had a stalker? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, do you want us to stalk you a little bit so you can uh, see how it feels? Uh, no, I'm good. Thanks. Uh. <laughs> <coughs> that was awkward. Okay, really? Okay. So we, we cannot test it. But 
let's say I would now start to uh, come here to the radio with chocolates and beer and I would like ask class if we can go for a walk around the building or something. You know, I'm trying to be uh, like, you know, down to earth yet a little bit romantic like Lasse, let's just go out and see the sunrise, sunset, cars or whatever. <coughs> Where did that come from? I think, you know, if you would not be interested after some time, you would find it uncomfortable and creepy. But if this would be a girl that you are really like, you know, okay, she's really cool, you would be like, yeah, let's go for a walk. Let's see the sunset, sunrise, you know. So I, I think that this is the whole deal here. Tetra, so don't worry, darling. You are not having a stalker. You just have an required attention. That's all you are having right now. Yeah, it definitely seems like you are still safe. Yeah, so this time challenge was really interesting. I know I say that about every single challenge, but it was interesting because it's actually a common common experience. Everyone probably experienced something like this, except of Lasse, of course, as we know already. And when I was solving this challenge with Marta, I also asked a couple of people what they think about the situation and what would they do. And the answers, some of them were hilarious. Some of them were actually really thoughtful and you could use it. So we gathered a couple of different solutions. We have our five main options, but we also have some notable mentions. And I think we will mention them. But let's just say what are your options are so you have a little bit of a teaser. So option number one is to, I call it the raging bull strategy, approach him head on. Option number two, go for a friendly yet direct conversation. Option number three, use the boyfriend card. Option number four, get interested in someone else, regardless if it's real or imaginary. And option number five, ask someone else to deliver a message. And Tetra Darling, I think that you have kind of did that, you know, by sending this challenge to us and hoping that he will see it. Uh, maybe you actually went a little bit for option number five already, I guess. It definitely seems so. Good point, girl. Good job. Good job. Amen. Fist bump. Good job. I wonder if he likes our page. That would be so great because, you know, we would get another follower just because he follows the girl. And maybe we get a challenge one day. I like this girl a lot and she uh, starts to pretend she has a boyfriend. Yes, Lasse. Uh, actually, to me, it sounds like the guy might just be really shy and doesn't know how to talk to her. Okay. Of course, it's super weird that he just follows like that. But, you know, she will have to say something to him in some way because mm -hmm. uh, maybe he doesn't know yeah. how to talk to her. And if he never hears, like, this is actually uncomfortable, or, like, he will never know how to, you know, deal with this. And, of course, it's also uncomfortable for her in this situation, maybe, you know? So, yeah, somehow, like you said, somehow you will have to tell him in some way. Otherwise, he might never learn, like, if that makes sense. It makes sense perfect sense and I think the weirdness of the situation is he is not direct. When you have a direct approach like listen I like you let's go out then you actually have a chance to say no but if the guy is like you know around you all the time and stalking you a little bit going to the same gym and stuff you are like okay does he really like me or am I just inventing this because then when you will just go and approach him uh, listen uh, I'm not really interested he might say uh, yeah uh, I'm not interested neither I'm just like you know here on this gym because I signed up and I brought you chocolates because I'm a nice human being so this is the uncomfortableness of the situation because then if she will approach him she might look stupid because then she assumed he likes her so it's it's a little bit yeah tricky but we have options as you've heard uh, but maybe first we will just uh, tell you what uh, my uh, wonderful colleagues has said about this so I was asking okay guys so what would you do and this came actually from a guy he said you know next time he will bring her a chocolate or a beer she should mention that she like Mercedes yeah and if he will not get the hint she should mention that she would really like a Mercedes and if he indeed gets her a Mercedes this she should marry him yeah it's uh, I was really laughing uh, when uh, when I read this option like you you've called it a Mercedes approach yeah and when I guys say that I've read the option is because we always also prepare a written version to each challenge so if you are listening to us on the radio and you would like to get the written version you can find it at our website you've got five options.com so it also comes with an article so I was really like yeah can you imagine this poor shy guy who doesn't even know how to to talk to the girl and then she comes to him and she's like you know i like mercedes that yeah. would be hilarious i think
Oh yeah, we're so smart and funny. Yeah, I also got a, a pretty similar approach. I call it the wish list approach. So uh, this one was coming from a woman. She said, you know, she should make a list of all kind of requirements or wishes she would like to have fulfilled and give it to him. And then if he will not fulfill, she should stop talking to him immediately. He should get the point. Uh, so people are really like uh, having this interesting idea. Okay, let's push the line and see how much further he will go. But can you imagine that the guy is just nice and friendly? Maybe he just wants to get a friend. He's not really into her. And then she comes with like a wish list. <laughs> he would be the one thinking he. <laughs> that is so true. And that was who's the stalker theory, which yeah. came from uh, from another guy this time. I think that guy actually really felt the situation situation, he was like, what if she is the stalker? What if she is on the gym, but he was there already? What if he's just a nice person and she just, you know, bubbles around uh, talking about chocolates and he's like, okay, maybe I should bring this girl some chocolates. Apparently she wants some. So actually this can be like, she might be the stalker. She just doesn't know it. You know, it's actually pretty funny. It's actually a very interesting theory that sometimes we build some kind of a story in our own head. We imagine that something is happening to us. We think someone is talking and then we are looking for every evidence that it's actually happening. Maybe the guy brings chocolates also to other girls in the class. Maybe he's just like a nice guy who is trying to get some friends. But you, when you already have a theory that something is happening to you, you are kind of like searching for all the evidence of that happening and maybe, you know, overlooking the things that would point out that it's actually okay or that it's actually normal or that maybe it's really a coincidence with the gym. Like they could be living in the same neighborhood and there is only one gym and it has absolutely nothing to do with stalking. So it's also an interesting idea here to maybe watch if the guy is behaving similarly towards other girls. And if he is like living in the same neighborhood or does he come from the other end of the city to that gym, then okay, we can... Uh, we could suspect something. Yeah, but it's it's really, it's really, really interesting, the whole part of our own perception and building the story in our own head. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I, I have seen it actually a couple of times. Um, I would say I'm guilty as charged. I definitely have done that in the past, interpret something in a way that was wasn't true. But actually, I know some really serious cases when guys just based on literally couple of small little events, they invented that the girl is so much into them. And I think for girls, it's even more tricky. Because when we try to be friendly, when we smile, when we just have a conversation, sometimes it's easy for the guy to get it as a sign that she's into me. And uh, I saw one situation that went really, really bad because the guy was like, I know she likes me. I know she likes me. And I was like, now does she really? And you know, when he started to say all this kind of events or things that happened, I was like, dude, she doesn't like you. That, that looks really like a, like a just a regular you know colleague relation and he didn't want it to believe me so I think that sometimes you build up the story so heavily in your head that then it's really hard to get out of it and I think this is what happened in that case. So I think uh, it also is sometimes uh, quite uh, amazing because it's enough that someone smiles at you and if you like this person you interpret this smile as uh, something special and as something pointing out to, oh, whoa, she likes me or, oh, he likes me. But if that's not the case on the other side, it's like I smile to everyone. I uh, am a friendly person. <laughs> so I would smile to every friend at the university or colleague at work or something. So it's like... Um, yeah, it's quite amazing what we build in our own head when we when we like someone or yeah. when we don't. Totally correct. So guys and girls, if you think that someone likes you, maybe also try to observe how that person behaves with other people. I think it would be a good indication. Although there is another spin on it because I also uh, know a lot of guys who are uh, saying like this girl she flirts with everyone. So they cannot make a distinction between, you know, someone being friendly and flirty. So let's say you smile to a guy and the guy interprets this as flirt. Then he sees that she does the same with other guys. So she's just a flirty girl, you know, she just needs an attention. So uh, then, yeah, I think that uh, especially Lasse, maybe you should defend guys because I'm just like putting a bucket of shit on guys. Sorry for my language. 
tell me if if this is correct. Can guy are are guys more prone to interpret those kind of gestures as as flirty? Uh, wow, <laughs> I think well, it's a very complicated situation. There are so many layers to yeah. this. Um, I just you know one thing I thought you said earlier that was really interesting, though. It's just I want to confirm that that is true in my beliefs. It's also that I'm sorry that I'm skipping around no! a bit. Um, no, was that we have these own perceptions in our mind and often when we think, oh, this is like, oh, maybe he likes me, maybe she doesn't, or like she's a stalker, he's a stalker. You only see one version of things and I think that is very true for people in general. I definitely know that for myself, that when I finally can take a step back and kind of view it in a broader perspective, I can see, oh, maybe there's actually more layers to this than I thought but I was so caught up in my own mind that I only saw this one version of how things were. And maybe that was not exactly true. I'm definitely guilty of that. So I just thought that was very interesting when you said that. If guys are more um, prone to maybe think, oh, she's into me because she smiled at me or she seems flirty, maybe. I think maybe there is some truth to that. You know, I think guys maybe easier get confused with signals maybe you know with someone is nice to them or they think that she's attractive and they talk well at work you know maybe there is sometimes uh, I think, oh is she into me or not i don't know maybe maybe i don't know like um maybe guys are more prone to that i don't know how women you know think in that regard you know if there's someone that are attractive at work or someone they talk well with and oh he's funny and smart and like maybe i maybe it's natural but yeah i mean for me it's just natural sometimes if i'm attracted to someone and i talk well with them kind of like, ah, is she into me maybe like uh we talk and we laugh and i can make her laugh and like sometimes i think like that um maybe um, guys are more prone to that i'm rambling here <laughs> No, I think that's actually a very good point. Marta? I think girls are just the same. I think it always works simply. If you like someone, you'll be looking for the signs and exactly. you'll interpret simple things like a smile, yeah, yeah. a nice talk. You will interpret it as yeah. a sign. So I think it's actually gender independent. Yeah, I, but I think that uh, although that's only my opinion, I think girls are more into signs. You know, we are more into making something out of nothing. Uh, I think with guys, it's maybe b because guys are, I think, more visual. Actually, there is a research that says that guys fall in love with women way faster than women with, with guys. Uh, and that is connected with many things, also the visual part. And it's surprising because usually, you know, we know those stories that the girl wants to get committed and the guy wants to be free, blah, blah, blah. But actually, guys are falling for girls way faster. For women, sometimes it takes weeks or months. Actually, there is also a, a, another uh, like a layer of this theory that says that if a guy is not attracted to a woman when he meets her physically, then most probably he will never build that attraction. However, if a girl is not attracted to a guy, she actually can build this attraction. And it happened to me, I will not disclose any names, but I know it's true, at least in my case, that the attraction can suddenly be built, you know, that the romantic attraction after weeks, months or whatsoever, you know, the guy will do one thing and then you fall for it. But I think that from guys perspective, it's, uh, it's because they can fall for girls faster and maybe that's why they go into this she likes me for girls on the other hand we are the the ultimate sign seekers you know he winked at me does he love me i got a text after two weeks i miss you oh my god we are going to get married and you know you can actually have like a meetup with girls and you know go through a conversation like messages like three messages and then they will just make a like a vivi section you know like yes do you think that the smiley face meant this or that i think it meant this it's actually pretty hilarious you know and it's it's really difficult to step out of it because then you are just interpreting everything yeah yeah if people could just be direct towards each other that would Ex have been so much easier huh so much like guys seriously it's like playing games will always end up in a bad way i, I like to be direct and i like when people are direct with me it really saves so much trouble and so much this kind of overthinking and creating things that are not there. So if I would say that there should be a message to the world from this part of an episode, I would say people don't play games, be direct. 
it really is saving a lot of time and and sometimes even suffering for another person. I also like Lasse's point, like just take take a step back and try to, you know, try to look broader on mm -hmm. the situation than only your own, you know, one way uh, of taking it. Yeah. I agree. And I'm actually really, really happy that we have Lasse here because we can finally have a male perspective in our podcast. It's awesome. Thank you, Lasse, for being here. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Can I say something quickly, though? Of course. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm just adding a bunch of time to this. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's amazing. I think that this uh, is But awesome. But um, I think they're like guys when they're younger because it's not true for everyone. But for me, it definitely was. I was the super awkward teenage kid that fell in love often I feel like with the way to attract a girl for me and she was like super popular and I was super shy and just kept to myself and thought no she will never like me I'm just weird I know it would never work out and it took me years and years to get through that and start to be like more open and try to see situations from a broader perspective and also come to the conclusion, you know, there are other people out there, you know, it's not healthy to become obsessed like that and to be so um, introverted in a way that you get caught in your own mind. I think a lot of guys do and maybe they are afraid from rejection and then it's easier just to stick by yourself and never try and do anything or say anything and be awkward and weird. And it took me time to get through that. But I can definitely see, you know, from the different perspective, it's super weird. Some guy that never talks to you, but just kind of <laughs> sits in the corner and looks at you maybe <laughs> or something like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, it's definitely, yeah, I don't know, because my teenage years were super weird and I feel like never talked about stuff like that and and girls never did you know they n never approached someone if they thought someone was weird not directly not from the other sex you know mm -hmm. um but maybe it is some because th if you are like that guy that is super shy and maybe maybe you're a really nice person but you're just super introverted and don't know how to talk to girls or you think that you don't know how to talk to girls someone at some point needs to tell him or he needs to experience something that can give him like a different perspective on life that oh there is another way to go through life than this you know um yeah i don't know what i'm trying to say i'm just rambling then. i think that you actually made a really really great point because i i think it also comes with an age uh, one a little secret more girls like nerd guys than you could imagine or kind of like you know a little bit guys who are uh, in their shell another thing is that one of the most sexy things in guys it's confidence and I know that this is actually what you have said that it's very difficult to get that confidence when you are overthinking your own persona and you are thinking okay who am I I'm weird I cannot talk I cannot do it and I know some stories from the guys and I know that they had a, some sort of a breakthrough thinking okay I will just go and talk with girls maybe I will make an idiot out of myself maybe I will fail but I will just keep on doing and some of them took it as an exercise as a training so you know it's like I'm not looking for girlfriend I'm not looking for wife I will just talk with as many girls as I can. I will try to be more and more relaxed and actually it worked. And those guys now, I know two who had this approach and they were shy. They are lady killers, tell you that. And it's, it's all about practice because you can be handsome, you can be interesting, but if you don't believe in that, then yeah, you just project exactly that. But if you are confident about who you are, it doesn't matter if you are a bit overweight or a bit skinny or a bit weird. When a guy is confident, that is actually the thing that draws girls the most. Yeah, and it's great in our podcast, we are now advising a, a little bit to the younger version of Les and maybe also a little bit the stalker. Uh, so uh, stalker guy, if you are listening to us here, is a good I, advice for I'm you. I'm not a stalker, by the way. No, just no, no. <laughs> The stalker of Tetra. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. No, we are, that's why I'm saying like the younger version of you and the stalker of Tetra. <laughs> yeah, I actually think that if, if we would have to make a prediction, it would end up with me stalking classes so he can feel how it is, you know. So no, Lasse looks totally normal in a sense that he doesn't look like a creep who would stalk you. 
I'm just trying to describe you visually and, <laughs> okay. and because you know it's like it's a radio. We should have a camera here so you can see us all. And yeah. also, lesson next time you like a girl, you know, you can just record something for her with your radio voice. Uh, it's a really good trick. Oh damn! Actually, you have a you have an asset, lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but we are almost coming close to finish this part of an episode. So I will just mention the very last funny option that I got from a guy again, and that was the kiss the guy approach. So uh, the guy said, okay, so if they are on the same gym, next time she will spot him there, she should go to the biggest badass guy on a gym and just kiss him. That will send a message. I was like, don't you think it's a little bit uh, drastic and cuckoo in the same time? He was like, yeah, it doesn't matter, you know, she will send a message. I mean, to big guys and, you know, you go and train on that other treadmill, but I I'm not sure if this is an option that many people would go for. I think that would be something uh, very difficult to go for. And I would say a rather, you know, a kind of like a really drastic, especially that, you know, it's like a stranger. You you go and kiss a stranger. And what if that stranger has a cool, cool wife or girlfriend at the gym? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. I, I, I'm not sure if I would ever just kiss randomly someone to make a statement. No, actually, I could do that. But I won't do that. I will not do that. But I will just stop now because it's irrelevant what I would do. Yeah, so we have uh, given now the five alternative options that uh, Anna has uh, got as an interview from different colleagues and friends. And uh, in our second episode, in the second part, we are going to talk about the actual five options uh, that uh, we have prepared for you, Tetra. So uh, it will be live on the show on Wednesday at uh, 1130, or you can listen to it on an online part of the radio. Uh, we'll have the link available on our Facebook page. So uh, guys, just get the link and uh, you'll be able to hear us there. Yeah. And in the meantime, if you would like to give us your opinion, then send us a message and tell us what do you think about the options we have come up with? And what do you think about Lasse's voice? Should we hire Lasse to be, uh, you know, uh, always with us here on yes, the show? I think so. I think so. Lasse, what oh, do you say? Thank you, guys. <laughs> You're very welcome. Okay, that was weird. My voice. I'm sorry, guys. If you haven't noticed, I'm a bit sick. That's why I sound a little bit off. So we will talk to you in our next episode, guys. Yes, thank you. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show. Remember that we are on air every Monday, Wednesday and every second Friday. Remember that you can visit our website www.you'vegot5options.com That is www.you V-E-G-O-T 5 as a number options.com where you can submit your challenge and find our podcast. You can also find us on iTunes or any podcast app.